Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It is time for Canis. This is a four versus four match in the upper, I would say the upper tier of the average Joe's sections. We do have a 2K and a 1700, but those are the odd ones out. I think our average is still going to be around 1600. All right, on the northern team, we do have Technolog. That is a Smurf Hunter, System Failure, and Asterix. On the southern team, we are going to go with to mm, to Tokido. That is correct. Tokido, Pinky Zoria, Hepco, and last but certainly not least, Speed to Action. You know what? I take back what I said. I see that there are two 2K players now. This is a well-balanced game, but it is decidedly above Average Joe's. So we'll have to see how this game goes to see whether they live up to that reputation as semi-pro level players. Um, we are double faction on the south side. Two UEF, two Cybran. There is no Aeon or Seraphim. On the northern side, we have no Cybran, but the other three are represented. Canis is a tight little map, but it has fallen into a metagame, the same trap that Sentence fell into. Everyone knows what mass extractors are theirs, where they're supposed to go, what they're supposed to do, and uh, it has kind of fallen into a, not a stagnant play, but the same things happen over and over on Canis. Um, even though it is action-packed, a lot of the games do run the same direction. However, when you throw 2,000 level players into the mix, a lot of times you will see innovative strategies, and that is what I am hoping for with this game. We're going to take a peek now. It looks like first land for everyone, and I do not see any air yet. Looks like there may be air in the work back here for speed. But not immediately. We do have an Air Factory queued for Smurf Hunter as well. Uh, but again, nothing immediate happening in the air, which is a big surprise. Early bombers are pretty popular on Canis, so already deviating from the norm. Got a pretty good unit spread coming out. We've got engineers getting out to the reclaim piles and the mass extractors. We have engineers pushing to the normal points, usually one holds the bridge, one holds the center, and one holds the left and right sides. We do have an air scout out now for Smurf Hunter that is going to provide some intel, at least know where the troop movements are. That is always an advantage to know what your enemies are doing. Everyone knows how important scouting is in Supreme Commander, but alas, a lot of us don't do it enough. Something that I think everyone can improve on. Smurf Hunter is just straight up going for the passive-aggressive turtle. Throwing up walls without point defense, funneling all of the units into his choke, and he's going to park his ACU right in the middle of that choke point get gun on that thing and you can effectively hold that against a ton of units because they all have to bunch up to come through the pass and that will allow you to overcharge pretty dang effectively. We're going to see a slight push forward from system failure. It is at six minutes. He possibly, no, does not have a gun upgrade. Alrighty, and down here, Tokyoto, Tokido. I don't know why I have so much trouble with that name, has already pushed a Tech 2 land factory and is getting some TMD up in anticipation of the ACU tack launcher that everyone always rushes for on Canis. That is Tech 2, I think, maybe. I think that is Tech 2. Alright, Technolog going for an ACU upgrade as well. Usually a decent amount of teching going on on Canis, which is surprising considering the map size. And even more walls! <laughs> Smurf Hunter is going to hide behind walls. That is exactly what he's going to do. I don't understand why, but if it makes him happy, then by all means, build your walls. 
Pinky Zoria. Uh, now, this kind of thing I actually do agree with. Walling off one section so that you can eliminate one pass that the enemies are coming through. This is just stupidity. I mean, you're slowing units down, yes, but it's it's such a pointless gesture. And then re rebuilding the walls when they get killed. Well done, good sir. Alrighty. Not a whole lot going on in the air. This is really surprising me. But we do have a TAC launcher. It is not an ACU TAC pack, but it is a TAC launcher. I think that landed a hit on Smurf Hunter because he's down a little over 6,000 HP. And that is going to start knocking down mass extractors. We do have a Tech 2 gunship snipe coming in. That is going to head for this TAC launcher. We actually had two people that went for TACs. And those gunships are going to start laying down fire on speed to action. There is a substantial amount of interceptors. There was no air, there was no air, there was no air, and then all of a sudden, bam, lots of air. Flak coming out for speed and from Hepco. Those are going to shred through those Tech 2 gunships and a substantial amount of interceptors. And then the teams will go barely about their way. Hepco needs to get to the water or overcharge. One or the other or both, preferably. You can pick up a vet is going to push those pillars back a little. And everything will be okay. Stocking up Tech 2 gunships on the other side. Now, I don't know why Smurf Hunter is still massing Tech 2 gunships. He should know that all of the players will have flak. Or they should have flak, I should say. Not necessarily they will have flak. Alrighty. Tech 2 bombers coming out for Asterix. The Nasas do have a pretty brutal, uh, just raw damage count. I do kind of prefer the Cybran bombers better, just because they're harder to dodge. But, uh, the Seraphim bombers do quite well for themselves. Smurf Hunter effectively raiding with these gunships. He's going to pull over here, kill off a mass extractor, some units, then pull to the side here and kill off some more and then run before the flat gets there so that was a much better performance than he showed the first time around I'm actually happy to see that but then dashing all of the hopes that I had for him he immediately flies directly over two bangers and just commits suicide with a whole bunch of gunships that's depressing alright moving on from that at least Smurf Hunter. No, I was about to say he stopped building walls, but no, he's building walls. So, oh well. Asterix needs to be very careful. He is in the red, even though that still gives him 4k HP. Um, you know what? There is not an Aeon player on the southern side, so there is no possibility of getting Mercy. However, there is the possibility of Tech 2 Bomber Snipes. Which is what we're seeing right here. Thankfully though, he had his handy dandy flat to save him. His teammate was a good teammate, unlike a lot of teammates out there. And threw some flak his way, effectively saving his butt. And uh, doing a royally good job of it at that. Percival's coming out now for speed to action. And is going to do a very good job of holding down the right hand side. Although I would be getting, there are a couple of tanks there. I would throw a few Titans in that mix. Because there is a whole lot of Tech 1 artillery over here for Asterix. Alrighty. Smurf Hunter throwing up Tech 1 bomber spam. Why? Tech Log doing a very good job of teching. Living up to his name, I guess you would say. He is up to 185 mass income. He needs to drop T3 and get a T4 going because uh, that is a whole lot of mass and he's going to be overflowing soon. Second runner up is Speed. He is pulling in 146, a very respectable number, but still 40 below what Technolog is pulling. 
Um, I would love to see what Technolog is going to build. And there was an ACU kill. Oh, man. That was a laser commander. That snuck up on me. Holy cow. That is a brutal move right there. Get Mazer on your comm, hide in the water, and when an unsuspecting ACU gets too close, calmly take a step out of the water and kill him. That is a brutal, brutal strategy. Well done, good sir. That was awesome. That is stealth, laser, and gun. Looks like Takedo may be doing something similar. Stealth, Tech 3. Tech 3 was his upgrade. Alright, he is going the tech route instead of Commander Com, or uh, Combat Com. But uh, that is, that, that is amazing. I love seeing stuff like that. When people think outside the box and uh, do so effectively to kill people always makes my day. Alrighty. Since there is a player down on the front, the southern team was trying to push through, but a good stack of tech two point defense is going to effectively deny that. Mobile missile launchers are a bit too far to the back to help out. And that is a double gun shield commander just shredding through those interceptors. Got an AA ACU. And then uh, Galactic Colossus coming down the center. Pinky Zoria is in trouble. The GC is faster than you. So that's not going to work out very well. GC taking down that comp pretty easily. Holy cow, look at the ripple effect. This must be RK Explosions. I think it is. Because um, that, that is a vicious ripple. There are some things I really, really like about RK's mod. There's some things I'm not a huge fan of, but I can deal with. The uh, ACU nuke explosions are a bit bright, which they have been toned back some, so I'm thankful for that. But effects like that ripple and stuff, pretty freaking fantastic. I love seeing stuff like that. Speed. Diving headfirst into enemy territory with no backup. You are a brave son of a gun. Calmly walking in. Turning himself into a one-man demo team. Just absolutely obliterating build power. Everything else. No, that is an SACU renamed. That is what that is. Derp. But... I was wondering why the area of effect was so big when he was not overcharging repeatedly. So yes, yes, people, I made a mistake. OP UEF SACU. Wrecking that base single-handedly. That is pretty amazing. A second GC out now for Technolog. He has all of that eco turning over 190 mass per tick and uh, he is going to convert that into a T4 wrecking machine got a third galactic colossus coming up now we do have a monkey lord two monkey lords from hepco but as we all know monkey lords are no match for a galactic colossus however if you can get a GC alone and you can get two monkey lords on it you will kill it we do have some bricks and medusas for backup there and then hepco if he's brave can jump out of the water and laser that gc but that is going to be unnecessary speed has now pushed up a fat boy accompanied by a squad of sacus this is going to be a force to be reckoned with even though there is a chicken over here uh, Asterix is going to run away. The chicken is a chicken. Ha ha ha. Um, yet another GC started. That is GC number four. Technolog rolling them out like nobody's business. It looks like Speed 
is turning himself into an SACU factory. He has two quantum gates running wide open, turning out those Rambo comms. And is a normal commander. Looks like normal commander's out of one and Rambo's out of the other. Uh, it's going to hurt. Shield is down on the fat boy. And there are two Yathathas coming in, but there are four SACUs. Look at the damage that they lay down on those T4s. Fatboy's going to come in and give them a hand. <laughs> Speed removed the name on his ACU to hide from anyone who might suspect him. But he needs... That was amazing. For those of you who didn't know, if you reclaim a chicken while it is being killed, it will not die and do the death ball. It will simply just cease to exist on its place of death. Alright, that squad of SACUs is going to move over to the left and absolutely kick. Yes. Not a... S oh! Just barely lost one. So sad. I thought they were going to get that GC down with uh, no losses whatsoever, but there was one loss. There's a fat boy up now in the north that was built by Smurf Hunter. Maybe the eco of um, of Technolog can save these guys. That is pretty much the hope that they have now. It is three versus three, but the southern team has a substantial head start on T4 production and a little bit better eco as a team than the north side does. Asterix surviving on a surprisingly low amount of mass income. I suppose his base did get hit the hardest by that assault earlier. That's probably the reason that it is so low. Megalith coming in for Hepco with the help. Yeah, this this is this is a brutal force. With the help of all those SACUs, um, that they just need to go ahead and push straight on into the enemy base because there is nothing that the northern team has that can stand up to that. There is a Ripper sitting dormant for Hepco. I don't know why he's not using that. Yet another GC building for Technolog. I Tenalog. I keep calling him Technolog. It is Tenalog. Tenalog. Um, I have lost count of how many GCs Tenalog has built. It's, it's like six or seven now, I think. Possibly eight. Alright, that Yathatha is going to be... Is not going to kill the Fat Boy, but the Fat Boy is immediately going to turn around and run into the Lightning Storm. Maybe? Yes? No? Maybe? Possibly? No. Alright, it is going to be totally fine. And now the northern team has problems. There are UEF SACUs in the base. There's a fat boy here trying to help when you have that much health to burn through on a shield. You can shrug off a fat boy for a pretty long time. All you gotta do is kill the ACU that owns that fat boy and you are in the clear. And that is going to be game so much destruction I cannot believe how many t4s these teams have rolled out Hepco has uh, not Hepco uh, speed has three fat boys we've got strats and a ripper and a megalith and a couple monkey lords from Hepco six or seven uh, GC's from Tenalog just a brilliant game absolutely brilliant all right guys i hope you enjoyed that as much as i did that is going to wrap it up for my cast today i've turned out two and i think that is enough for one day so i hope you guys will tune in again tomorrow i have plenty of replays to last me two or three days but send them to me anyway i will backlog them and i will get to them when i can all right guys that is it